You're listening to The Corbett Report. CorbettReport.com Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Corbett Report podcast. I am your host, as always, James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, coming to you from the sunny climes of Western Japan on the 10th day of August, 2018. This is episode 344 of the podcast, Problem, Reaction, Solution, Internet Censorship Edition. Now, I know what you're thinking to yourself. You're thinking, self, why are we so blessed and honored to have not one, but two separate editions of the Corporate Report podcast proper in one single week? Especially during the summer doldrums, when Brock West is away on holiday, and James should be spending some time with his family and resting and recuperating before the busyness of the fall sets in. Well, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, it is not happy news by any means that brings me here today to you. It is the fact that I am pissed off. Not sad, not disappointed, actively pissed off at the reaction that I've seen from so many people with regards to the news of the week. What news am I referring to? Of course, the news that we've all heard by now of the social media purge, the crackdown, and obviously the most the largest name, the big example that everyone will point to, of course, is Alex Jones and Infowars being taken off of Facebook and YouTube and Apple and other places. Spotify has been uh, cracking down. So that has been the big story. And on top of that, as some of you I'm sure have seen, but maybe some haven't, uh, Daniel McAdams of the Ron Paul Institute and Scott Horton of the uh, Scott Horton Show and the Libertarian Institute, both previous guests on this program, have had their Twitter accounts suspended, seemingly indefinitely, and Peter Van Buren of We Meant Well has had his account completely deleted because of a little altercation they had with an MSM uh, zombie uh, earlier this week, or I guess last week at this point. Anyway, if you haven't heard about that story, I'll put the link in the show notes so you can catch up on it. But as I say, we all know about the news of the week and the general theme of the social media crackdown. And this is apparently, according to pretty much everything I've seen, even from alternative media personalities that I respect and whose commentary I look forward to, they're all mouthing the same pieties and platitudes and missing the point of all this. This is the point where I'm supposed to go, well, yeah, Alex Jones is crazy and he says some nonsensical things and he acts like a clown and he might be controlled opposition, but we should all be on his side on this because it could be us next and blah, 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 blah. This conversation is stuck on stupid. I am telling you, this is a chess game. They are not thinking of this particular play in the chess game. They are thinking two, three, four, five, six, seven moves in advance so that they can checkmate you into the exact square of the board they want you to go to, and you will go there willingly of your own free will because you are being led along a path by a false dichotomy. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the idea that there are two two different ways of looking at this perspective. And if you're a if you're a right-thinking, liberal, centrist, normie, whatever, maybe you're happy about the way Alex Jones and others are being treated on these social media platforms because, well, there's a terms of use and these people are spouting crazy hate speech, whatever, they need to be taken off the platforms uh, in order to protect the public sphere because that's what Twitter and Facebook and all these things amount to right now. And if you're a good-thinking, conservative, whatever, MAGA-wearing, hat-wearing Trump supporter, then you have to be up in arms and outraged and say, no, we, this is crazy, this is stupid, we can't just ban people for political wrong-think. What we need is some sort of internet bill of rights to protect ourselves in the public sphere because Twitter and Facebook and all of these companies are now the public sphere. Do you see the false dichotomy? Do you see how both of those allowable opinions that everyone chooses their side, do you see how they both share a certain underlying assumption? What is that underlying assumption? The public sphere is now Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and whatever, the the big tech giants. That now is... The public sphere. So we have to protect it and we have to get government in to regulate and, and make some internet bill of rights so we can't be kicked off these platforms. No, we need the, these, these, these companies to use their terms of service to kick these crazy conspiracy theories off. And that is the debate that we get stuck in. But it's wrong. It's factually 
wrong. It is based on the principle that Twitter and Facebook and what have you are the monopolistic controllers of public debate, public opinion, the public sphere, the public space. It used to be you go to the town square, now you go on Twitter and you tw do a tweet blast. And that's how you participate in public discourse now. No! No, it is not. And that thinking is exactly, exactly what the big tech overlords want you to think. Do you not think that Zuckerberg and his pals are wetting their pants in anticipation of government stepping in and declaring that Twitter and Facebook and what have you, these are now, these are now such important platforms that we must now, well, of course, acknowledge their monopoly status and then regulate them. They want this. They desire this. Oh, don't throw us in the briar patch and make us into the monopolies that we want to be. Do you understand how this works? There are a couple of things going on here, so let's break them down. I mean, first of all, we have the historical example of when government comes in to break up a monopoly and what ends up happening. If you don't know about that story, I would suggest you go back to How Big Oil Conquered the World and hear about the Rockefeller Standard Oil Monopoly and what happened when the government came in to break up that monopoly and Rockefeller ended up getting richer and more powerful as a result. Oh, don't break up our monopoly. Oh, now I have seven companies I can control that are technically separate companies, so they can do their different things and all working in the same way for the same agenda, and all the money goes back to me in the end anyway. I'm even richer, rubbing hands in anticipation. But this is this time, this isn't about money. Yeah, Zuckerberg might have lost a few zeros from his net worth, whatever, blah, 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 which is all in his little philanthropic endeavor anyway. So, you know, what does that matter to his bottom line at the end of the day? No, this isn't about money. This is about power. This is about cementing into place something that is is not cemented into place. The position of these companies as the dictators of the public sphere, the public debate, the platforms that we all have to use and we all have to participate in if we want to participate in public conversation. That doesn't exist. Case in point, do you remember MySpace? Do you remember dig.com? If you do, you're probably over 20 years old, because if you're under 20, I can't imagine you had any interaction with these sites when you were seven, eight, nine years old. But for those of us who do remember the, the internet of a decade ago, those were the giants of that time. They were, if you had any social media, you had MySpace. I had MySpace when I started The Corporate Report. It was an important outlet for reaching people. I had I was on dig and telling people to dig my articles because if you got enough digs and you got to the front page it would get really take off. And where are they now? Oh that's right. No one knows or cares or even remembers these spaces because they're gone. They're yesterday's news. They are long gone. In my space's case, of course it was bought out and ultimately undermined and then dig was uh, there was all that manipulation with the super users who could scuttle things off the front page even if they got a lot of digs and blah 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 and people got disgusted and moved to Reddit, which is controlled in its own other way. But anyway, the, 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 the process moves and people move on to other, unfortunately in this case, controlled platforms, but they move on to other platforms. Can you imagine if the government of 10 years ago had said, look, Everyone's on MySpace. Everyone's using Dig. We must regulate these and put these... I mean, these are the public sphere, so we must make special rules for these corporations and everybody will have to be given an account for these and blah, blah, blah. They would still be here. They would still be dictating the debate and being the platforms that everybody has to use because they achieve that monopoly status that is granted by the implication of government coming in with special regulations. Do you understand how this works? Facebook and YouTube and all these platforms, they want this kind of regulation because it means that they, the thing that they actually fear will not come to pass. What do they actually fear? They actually fear people taking their time and attention and energy and money and eyeballs and data and everything else and going somewhere else, which you can do. That already exists as an option. This is not pie in the sky stuff. This already 
exists. There are already alternatives to these platforms that are already out there. But the network effect, James, blah, blah, blah. No, do not take the responsibility for this and put it on someone else. It rests on you. You are not a helpless bystander in what is going on here. Here. Oh, we have to use Facebook. We have to use Twitter. You do not have to use any of these platforms. You choose to use them. That is an important distinction because as always, there are things we have no control over. One of them being when and if the government comes in to regulate these monopolies, you will have no control over what they ultimately end up doing. And when the government steps in, do you really think the government is going to step in to say, now Twitter, now Facebook, now YouTube, you got to give the platform back to Alex Jones and let's all play fair. Do you think that is how this is going to go? Of course it isn't. And uh, the thing that's the most frustrating about all of this is that it is the very audience that I would have expected would have been the most vocally opposed to such a proposal are the ones who seemingly are most clamoring for it at the moment. Well, we need some sort of internet bill of rights to protect us, and we need the government, and we need a regulatory body to come in and make sure that these big platforms give us all an account and treat us all equally and blah, blah, blah. No, that is a false dialectic. It's a false way of thinking about this. And again, the thing that they actually fear is you using your actual will and determination in your own personal volition to choose to go somewhere else with your time, with your attention, with your energy. And those things already exist. This is why I've been screaming from the rafters for years about social media alternatives and moving to alternative platforms. This is why I had an entire series talking about the different alternatives that already exist. Again, this isn't pie-in-the-sky stuff. There are decentralized, blockchain-based alternatives where they cannot take away your right to access these, these accounts that already exist. You can already use them. I am already using them. And this is the other thing that people don't understand. But I don't, I have a lot of Facebook friends. I don't want to give that that access up. And, and I want to go to some other platform where no one knows me. Nobody else is using it. You don't have to, you don't have to leave these platforms. Just start using the alternatives. Start creating a space somewhere else. That is the first step. And eventually you are going to want to get off of these platforms, as you should. You know that you know that these social media platforms, the big tech giants, the big Facebooks and YouTubes and Twitters, are intelligence agency data collection tools. We know this. You've seen my reports on Silicon Spies, on Facebook's murky origins, on Google and its relationship to the CIA and NSA, and all of these things. We know about that. We, On top of that, we know from their own mouths that the designers of these platforms specifically set out to addict you to them, using your brain chemistry, using neuropsychological principles that they've worked on and tailored and crafted with their, their little behaviorist principles, knowing, oh, just like the mice with the, 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 the uh, uh, unpredictable reward schedule, and he'll just keep pressing that button over and over and over. Well, we can get you pressing that button and scrolling and clicking over and over and over, just giving you certain rewards and certain bells and whistles and certain notifications at certain times and a little bit of interaction here and a little notification there, and you will continue using their platform over and over and over and over and over until you die, seemingly. Well, that's of course. These platforms are controlled precisely to keep you on that treadmill and to keep you thinking that the only way you can have social interaction is on their controlled platforms, so we all have to have a big fight about who's allowed to be on those controlled platforms. That is a controlled opposition way of looking at this. I, I know my audience knows about problem, reaction, solution. They present a problem, you react to the problem, and they present the solution to save you from the problem. Of course, the solution was talked about, planned about, lusted after for a very long time, but they can't just put the solution in front of you because, hey, whoa, that's crazy. No, no, you need the problem and the reaction. So if the solution is going to be, don't worry, the government will come in and break up these monopolies and regulate these big tech giants, and, and the big tech guys will go, oh, please don't do that to us and make sure that we're here forever for you know, and cement us our, our place 
into in hardwire us into the internet so that we'll we'll be here forever. Oh, please don't do that. That'll be horrible. And then it happens, and hey, it's uh, everything works out, and and they still kick people off the platform, and the, this time it has the government stamp of approval. So there's really nothing you can do about it. Oh no, you can you can vote a different team in in four years, right? Nonsense. Total nonsense. It's a total psyop. But. Again, the very people who would have been opposed to government regulation of the internet a few years ago are the very people who are now starting to inch closer towards that goal. And I see it happening, and I watch them marching like lemmings off the cliff, willingly, happily, and yes, it pisses me off, as you can see. Uh, Once again, you are not a helpless child in all of this. You're not a helpless spectator. You do not have to rely on some someone else to grant you some platform from which you can speak. No, you choose what you are doing with your time, attention, and energy. And there is a bright spot in all of this, because as you may have seen, and I don't have the statistic in front of me, so I'm going to put the link in the show notes so that you can check it out, but something on the order of 40% of social media users have deleted at least one social media account in the past year. It can be done. And people are starting to do it. They're starting to wake up to the fact, hey, you know, Facebook is a completely controlled platform that's only there to harvest my data and to collect information on me uh, for the government behind the scenes. Maybe it's not a good idea to be feeding them all my data myself. Maybe I shouldn't be using their platform. Bing, 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 bing. Yes, maybe you shouldn't. And again, it doesn't mean you have to be a hermit or be a unibomber out in the woods drinking bugs and rainwater. It means you start exploring the alternatives that already exist helping to foster new alternatives. If you don't like what you see, create something new. It can be done. It is being done. There are people out there that are spearheading this. I've been talking about it for years. I will put the link into the social media alternatives uh, uh, series that I did, as well as some of the other videos I've done talking about the things that already exist and the need for these platforms in general. I'll also put in the links in the show notes talking about, in case you didn't get the message over the last several years, the fact that the big tech giants are, of course, the intelligence agencies behind the scenes. They are one and the same, and they are working for an agenda that is certainly not in your interests. So you should not be clamoring to please allow us a space on your platform so that we can give you all our data and put all our things on your controlled platform so that at some point in the future they can just erase it all and completely eliminate your digital existence. No. And again, the underlying mentality is either you're a helpless bystander here and you have to wait for some government savior to come in and assure your position on the platform, or you are out there actively creating the alternative space that will make Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and Snapchat and all of these control platforms utterly irrelevant. They will be the MySpaces and digs of 10 years from now if we migrate, if we turn away en masse from these control platforms. The choice is ours. The choice is yours. Do not put this this off onto someone else. So that's that's the message for today. And that's the message that I don't see anyone talking about when it comes to this issue. I see a lot of people clamoring for the very types of government regulation and that uh, they, you would have expected they would not have been on board with. Anyway, that's my thought on all of this. And I'm going to go calm down. <laughs> And enjoy the rest of my summer. Uh, Of course, videos, interviews, articles still continuing to come out through CorporateReport.com. I'm not really taking any sort of holiday, um, but maybe a few fewer podcasts until we get going in the fall. And trust me, I've got a lot of stuff lined up, um, some big stuff coming. So please stay tuned for that. Thank you for tuning in and for going to CorbettReport.com for these reports, not GooTube or any other controlled platform. You are the resistance. You are choosing what platforms will thrive and which will die. On that note, James Corbett, CorbettReport.com, looking forward to talking to you again in the near future.